Hello beautiful people, welcome back, and today we're going to be talking about trends we should leave in 2023. Now instead of curating a list of my own thoughts, I decided to ask the audience and I'll basically read the comments and give my thoughts and if I agree or disagree. Now without further ado, let's hop right into it. The first person said, promising slash hyping fans up about new music, then never releasing it. I understand life happens, but if it's a continuous pattern, then it's a problem. And I agree. I've also seen some instances where artists get mad and then act like fans are entitled and are in the wrong. But it's like you've hyped them up. You've set that expectation. If the music isn't ready or you don't know, then don't give a date. Or time frame, because people will be disappointed if it doesn't come out. One person said, Pressuring celebrities to speak on political topics to spread awareness. I'd rather have educated people who have taken interest in said topics for more than three days to post facts and legitimate resources to further create any discussion of value than have a celebrity who probably hasn't even finished high school to post about serious matters just to get clout or out of fear of being canceled. I want celebrities to entertain me and politicians slash activists to educate me. That's it. I do agree that the kind of dogpiling of celebrities to speak out about things on the internet is a bit egregious, and I feel like it's a damned if you do, damned if you won't scenario where you will never completely satisfy anyone on either side, and there will always be someone mad on either side. But I will say there is a difference when a celebrity aligns their brand with activism then people will come to expect activism from you and people will call you out if you're not consistent with it. And I think that's fair. Like you can't just use activism when it's beneficial for you and expect people not to take notice. But celebrities who just stay to themselves and aren't political should just be allowed to exist without people bothering them or dogpiling on them to speak about something they likely know nothing about. The next person said songs without bridges. And I agree, I do feel like Bridges are making a slight comeback, but in the era of TikTok and artists trying to game the streaming systems, I feel it's going to be a long while before we see a full return of Bridges. The next person said, slow boring music dominating everything. And I feel like this is an L take, because it implies that if something is slower, it's boring, and that's just not the case. And also for the last few years, we have experienced a disco and dance revival. So I'm not really sure where this whole slow songs dominating everything narrative is coming from. But even if that were the case, if the slow song is good, it deserves to dominate just as much as an up-tempo song does. Another person said, Chris Sean Rock and Blueface, please. And I agree. I said this last year. Um, we should drop them off wherever we dropped off Takashi69 and never look back. Despicable couple. And neither one of them seem to be very good people. I'm just sad that they brought a child into it. Next we have Beyonce versus Taylor. And I so agree. This year has been all about Renaissance and Eras Tour and their respective albums. And this is one stand beef and pop culture comparison that I haven't given much energy to because I find it to be so ridiculous. Beyonce and Taylor Swift are polar opposites. They are completely different. And they are also in completely different stages of their careers. You don't go to Beyonce or Taylor expecting the same or even similar things. They also approach their artistry and performances very differently. But what I respect about the Beyonce and Taylor thing is that both of the artists at the center of the spectacle are strong enough to not give in to the comparisons and the stand beef. They just stick together and they complement each other and they persist in spite of everything going on around them in the chaos. This would never happen with someone like Nicki and Cardi, for example, but Beyonce and Taylor are just a different class. Someone said BBLs. Now people will inevitably do what they want with their bodies. I will just say that I don't think young people, and yes that includes young adults as well, should be going under the knife so soon when they're not even done developing. The next person said lazy devil worship imagery, and I so agree. Now I want to clarify that music is a free art form and religion has shaped the world as we know it today, so inevitably religion will impact music in some form and some influence, and some of the best popular songs of all time have religious imagery or religious ties, like Madonna's Like a Prayer or Princess Die For You. 
But like I said previously, I do think there is an uptick of artists who are using religious imagery, specifically satanic imagery, as rage bait at this point. It's not like they're saying anything interesting in their songs or music videos. It's just like, hey, look at me, I'm so shocking, ha ha ha, I'm a troll. But there's not anything else going on. There's nothing being said in the song. The music's not good. And there's just so many artists using satanic imagery as a crutch for controversy and not delivering on all fronts. It's just a vanity project. Now there's actually this comment left on one of my videos that I think about every time this topic is brought up. And I feel like it was so well put and so well written. And they say, I so agree with satanic imagery slash the implication of satanism being a cheap way to create discourse. Of course, when Christian extremists denounce anything, tons of people go to defend it or brag about liking it. It's the easiest punching bag of controversy to draw attention to your submissive and bold work. Air quotations. Honestly, I'd love to see an artist take religious motifs beyond ooh, haha, ha, red devil horns and Illuminati and a pentagram so evil and actually tap into what Christian occult has to offer. And that about sums this topic up. Someone said, remixes that aren't really remixes and only add like one to two new verses to a song, especially ones that hype up a famous featured artist just for them to be barely in it. And I agree, especially with the latter half of this comment, it's annoying when something is hyped up as a remix or a collaboration and it's just like 20 seconds of the featured artist and it's like, what's the point? I really do appreciate when artists put time into reworking a song and making it sound like a true collaboration, even if it isn't drastically different from the original, just make it have some type of chemistry. And someone said sped up versions, and I'm somewhere in the middle with this. I don't really care about sped up versions, but I don't think every single song in existence needs to be sped up, which TikTok loves to do, but it doesn't fit every song. Someone said canceling celebrities just to forget about whatever scandal they were involved in a week later. The worst is when people cancel someone, do the absolute most, and drag their name through the dirt just to defend them a week later. And I agree to a certain extent. On one hand, Celebrities aren't likely going to be canceled unless you do something just truly awful or you make a seriously bad career move. Most people are not going to be canceled and that's just reality. And on the other hand, yes, people should be held accountable for the bad things that they do. But also, I just don't think it's realistic to hold something against someone for the rest of their lives. Of course, I'm talking about petty beefs. Now, they're taking advantage of people or doing nefarious things to that nature, then they should be behind bars. But if it's a little controversy, then people are allowed to grow, people are allowed to move on. Someone else said, songs that aim to go viral on social media. Like you could definitely hear the hints and structure of songs that can easily be adapted to making content. And I agree, this is what I call the TikTok formula. It's so cringe, so annoying, and just devalues music, it's just so low effort. Someone said filming at gyms. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with filming at gyms, filming yourself at gyms, I should say. A lot of people take progress pictures and videos of themselves at the gym. But obviously, filming other people and bothering them while they're minding their own business should not be allowed at all. Someone said naming everything a core or aesthetic. Like, what do you mean you're a vanilla sweet bean and grass organic aesthetic? And I agree with this. It just gives like, you want to be a part of something. Like you were left out, you didn't get enough attention, so now you're just trying to make something up. Another person says, hating on every single new slash upcoming artist and calling everyone an industry plan. And I also agree with this. Obviously artists will be analyzed and their come-ups will be analyzed. And some people's come-ups may be untruthful and it will be, you know, called into question. But not every artist has faked their come-up. Someone said throwing stuff at singers slash performers on stage and agree. Now this is not a new phenomenon, of course. Things have been getting thrown on stage since forever. But this year, there were a lot of harmful things being thrown on stage and it should not be allowed. Immediately get kicked out. Act like you have some sense or don't come at all. Someone else said sampling classic beloved songs to create an unoriginal pop song. Sampling has been a part of popular music for ages, i.e. Crazy in Love has samples in it. However, using very recognizable sections of classic songs to create lazy pop music is tacky. I'm looking at you, David Guetta, and agree, agree, agree. Sampling is not the problem. Lazy sampling is. 
Like, we know you're creatively bankrupt, but you do not have to ruin our beloved classic songs. Someone said horrible attempts at alternative music by artists who do not understand the genre. But I do want to welcome more collaborations between hard rock artists and mainstream radio artists, like what Megan Thee Stallion did with Cobra and Spirit Box. And I somewhat agree, I do think there are many recent examples of artists trying to go in an alternative route and completely falling on their face. I also think there are artists who may try something a bit alternative and then develop a superiority complex over the music that gave them a career, like we saw what happened with Lil Yachty this year. And I also do agree that there should be more collaboration between alternative and underground artists and radio artists, you know, to help expand popular music. But that about concludes my thoughts in this video. What did you guys think? What trends are you guys leaving in 2023? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.